Welcome back. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. We get to talk about penises and vaginas. Um, today we'll finish up our anatomy and physiology series with the reproductive system. We're going to do it in two parts. This first part will do the female reproductive system and then we'll have part two where we'll talk about the male reproductive system. Obviously the reproductive system is involved in reproduction. Um, this is where we make gametes, so the ovum or egg and the sperm. And then via sexual intercourse, the sperm is introduced to the egg and that's where we're able to make an embryo where we're able to produce offspring. The reproductive system is also involved in producing the sex hormones. So androgens like testosterone in men and estrogens and progesterones in women. These hormones are important for maintaining the reproductive systems. They're also important for um, governing or producing the sex characteristics that are associated with the male um, versus the female. So with the male, things like a deeper voice and the male pattern of hair growth. With the female, um, typical things are fat deposition um, in the breasts and more in the buttocks and hips. So let's start with the female reproductive system. Looking right here, just to get a general view of what you're looking at, of course, this is the pelvis. Um, this is the anterior or front of the model, and this is the posterior or rear portion of the model. Um, back here, this is showing us the rectum. So this is the very end of the GI tract. Notice that directly in front of the rectum, you have the vagina. So this right here is showing us the vagina leading up to the uterus. Okay? And then right in front of the vagina, you have the bladder. So those are kind of our, our big structures that we're looking at here. We'll start right here um, with the external genitalia of the female. The female has two pairs of skin flaps or folds. The external pair is a larger set of folds or skin flaps that are called labia majora. Labia majora, these are larger hair covered um, areas of skin. Just inside the labia majora, we have smaller uh, little folds of skin that are called labia minora and those are hairless. I'll show you another view in one moment. But the external are the labia majora, the internal are the labia minora. Right here, um, this little nub that you see sticking out in the very front or anterior portion um, on the female anatomy is the clitoris. That's an erectile structure that's used, uh, or stimulation is good for sexual arousal. If I open this up, now you guys can see those, those folds a little bit better. Again, the external folds are the labia majora, the internal folds are the labia minora, minor as in smaller. Um, this is showing you the clitoris. This again, remember I said in the very front was the bladder, so that makes this tube leading down the urethra where the um, urine exits the bladder. Going back behind the urethra, this passageway right here is the vagina. Um, the vagina accepts the penis during intercourse, and it also forms the lower part of the birth canal when an infant is being born. Um, menstrual fluids, blood and tissue um, during menstruation also exits via the vagina. If you follow the vagina up um, back here, it leads to the uterus. And the uterus has multiple sections to it. The first part of the uterus, uterus is the cervix. Okay, remember that because it looks like a C, right? It's C-shaped right here, C for cervix. Um, the entrance into the cervix, this little passageway right here, is the cervical canal. Then the uterus right here, the main part of the uterus is the body. And then this top bulge up here is the fundus. So the cervix, the body, the fundus. The open area in the center of the cervix um, is where the embryo would implant and grow, where the fetus would develop. Um, <clears throat> we call that the uterine cavity. Okay, so the cervical canal is the entrance and that leads to the uterine cavity or the open space. When we look at the wall of the uterus, we see that it has multiple layers. There are three layers, the endometrium, the myometrium, and then the parametrium. The endometrium is the innermost layer. That's the area that builds up every month um, during the uterine cycle and then is shed during menses. The middle layer that you see right here is the myometrium. That's made of smooth muscle. That's what produces contractions during childbirth. And then the outermost layer out here is the parametrium. Okay, so endometrium, 
myometrium, parametrium. We see that connected to the uterus, um, there are tubes. So on either side, going out laterally, we have a set of tubes that we call fallopian tubes or uterine tubes. If I show you on this model, you can probably see them more clearly. Let's see if I show you like this. This is the uterus right here. And you can see there's a tube connecting to the uterus over here, and there's another tube over here connecting to the uterus. These tubes, again, are fallopian tubes or uterine tubes. They connect to the uterus, and then they come out and they kind of curve around the ovaries. So in yellow right here, this is showing you one of the ovaries. When we look at these fallopian tubes, we see that they have multiple segments or sections to them. The first part here where the tube connects to the uterus is called the isthmus, the isthmus. Then right here, this part where it swells a little bit, it gets a little bit thicker, that's the ampulla. Then this whole end part, this whole funnel shaped end piece, like from here on, is called the infundibulum. Now when we look at the infundibulum, you'll see that it has these little finger-like projections on it, and those are called fimbriae. Okay, so the infundibulum is like the hand, the fimbriae are like the fingers. So this is the uterine tube or fallopian tube. It connects the uterus to the ovary. It has an isthmus, an ampulla, an infundibulum, and then fibrae. Fimbriae it has an M in there. Um, looking at this, okay, this is another model. Again, this is the uterus. Okay, uterus. And it has a uterine tube or fallopian tube that connects it to the ovary. The uterine tube has an isthmus, an ampulla, an infundibulum, and then fimbriae. Um, if I turn this this way, you can see the uterus, the uterine cavity, the cervix, the body, the fundus. Connected to the uterus, you see the vagina. And again, in front of that is the bladder with the urethra. And behind the vagina is the rectum, the last part of the GI tract. The only other structures that we need to look at for the female are in the breast. Um, when we look at the breast tissue, we'll look at the actual um, tissue itself in lecture. From the model, um, you guys should just be able to identify um, both the nipple and the areola. So the nipple is the protrusion right here um, where the milk comes out for the infant. The areola is the dark tissue that surrounds the nipple. Um, it's said that the areola, one, attracts the infant to the area, to the nipple where the milk is. So kind of like a target. Um, and then it also decreases irritation during nursing. So nipple, areola. That's it for the female reproductive system. Um, I'll be back in a minute and we'll do the male reproductive system.